This series of videos has been filmed in an ATF16949 certified supplier who is involved in the manufacture of a wide range of rivets used for automotive and non-automotive applications. They also design and manufacture equipment used in rivet insertion. The video shows extract of simulated ATF16949 audits focus on the organization's quality management system processes. Watch this video and see if the auditor is undertaking the audit effectively. As always, we welcome feedback and comments. Dave, I understand that you can Hi. help me. So yep. I've just been auditing the process of how you receive okay. uh, the steel wire. Yep. Um, I've looked at batch number 2083. Yep. And they pointed me in your direction okay. to talk about the verification yes, no of the, the material uh, quality. That's fine. So could you give me an overall uh, <coughs> explanation first? Of okay, what you so do? an overall explanation straight away is, is this is all one delivery that's come today and um, this morning. Um, it's wire batch 2077, which is already um, a wire batch that we have in stock and what a new wire batch today, which is quite handy for what we're doing here is 2083. This is the one that I saw this is, out this there. Is the one there. Yeah. So basically what we do, we, they come wrapped in um, plastic. We take the plastic off and on, attached to every coil is, is a sample of wire for, yep. that, for that coil. Yep. So we take that off and bring it into the, into the lab here, yep. um, label it all up ourselves. And basically we just cut it down and cut a small piece off. And then what we do then, we cut and mount them on the machine over there and we uh, polish them. We grind them down first on the uh, piano discs, which are 200 and 1200 and then onto the polishing pad over there, and then we decab them over on the microscope over there. Right. So that's okay. more the physical uh, yeah. way of uh, doing and it. Just explain why the six samples. There's, there's six samples here because there's six um, coils in that wire batch. Oh, okay, in, so it's one sample per coil. Yeah, it's one sample per coil. So there's six coil batch, um, uh, coil, <laughs> coils, sorry, on that wire batch. And on this one here, which is already an existing watch, which, which is slightly easier, um, because we don't have to do the tensile on that but because this was a new wire batch that we had in today we've had to do a tensile on it to right. test out the mega pas pascals and the, and the strength of, of the uh, of the wire uh, which is passed here because right. it needs to be between 540 and 590 mega pascals right. and it's, which it's passed today matches yeah that matches the control plan <coughs> so let, let's concentrate on the the tensile strength first then. okay so as the control plan says 540 to 590 yeah what was the actual reading? The actual reading for this today, off coil three it is. So it's wire batch 2083. The coil number is 32718 slash 03. Um, and we have to put in the wire diameter, which I, I, I measure all the wire diameters before yep. I go to make sure that there is spec. Um, because the wire diameter for this batch so needs 5. to be 5.5 5. 5. to 5.55, which is yeah. all on the actual um, CFC. Yeah, and again, that yeah. matches the control plan. Yeah, um, which yeah. is got all of our chemical analysis on here as well, which is, is part of the um, heat treat number there. So we, yeah. we just check it with their <coughs> specifications. And, and this, this is provided by the supplier? This is supplied, supplied right. by the supplier, yes. Yeah. So we just make sure that it is the chemical analysis is right. We do all that before we go to um, do the tensile. So we, we have to put the wire diameter in for the, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, for the um, tensile. And is the, the tensile, tensile machine. Yeah, is the tensile <coughs> test done in here? Uh, no, it's in equipment. Ah, oh, okay. So we'll, so it's, we'll, it's we'll follow that in a minute. Yeah, it's the other side of uh, the Because I want to verify the calibration of that yeah. tensile tester. Um, so, so basically then what we do, it's, <laughs> it's, we work on a 10% um, uh, things so so with this being six coils we only need to do one so if it's anything oh, over okay. 10 coils so say for this one if this hadn't been this wire batch 2077 with it being 11 coils that's just out of the 10 percent. so we'd have to do two samples then right and take them down to tensile yeah but with this only being a new batch and being six we just had to do one so this one passed today and it had to be between sorry going back to 540 to 590 megapascals and it was 547 so that's five, that's, four, that's great okay that's perfect. and what action would you take if it didn't pass and uh, we the then test? we then would flag it up to steve davenport who is um in charge of that so yeah <clears throat> and also 
Yeah. Um, basically, send an email to everyone, everyone else. On, and that's SQA, that we, isn't it, yeah, Steve? Yeah. Okay, so we will follow that with SQA. Yeah, so, okay. um, Does that happen very often? Uh, no, 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 not very I, often. Again, no. that matches the records that I saw yeah. uh, when I looked I mean, at it the does, It does occasionally, but, but what we do, we take two samples down per coil. So right. if one fails, we, we, re, we test it again. And if they both fail, that's when we flag it up to yes, speed down. And then it, it gets um, blue labeled then. Yeah, and just going back one step, you said, is it the decarburisation yes. test you do? Yeah. What's the acceptance criteria for that? Um, it's, it's, well, it's on the wall here. It's the Martin site that we have there that we have to have that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That, 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 that texture, that... that um, and that's done using the microscope Yeah, that's done here. using the microscope. So what we do, we, we, once we've taken it down on the grinder, we've polished it and we've... Um, Dipped it in acid. It's it's a five percent nitric acid yeah. mixed with uh, methylated yeah. spirits. Um, clean it, clean it with methylated spirits. Dry it out, and we check it on there. And that would show the grain structure. The reason yes. you, that's the structure an etch effectively. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And again, with this batch, how do we record the result of that decarburisation? Um, basically check? here. So um, there's there's P for pass, obviously F for fail. So this this at the moment is a work in progress. Um, by, why about 2083? The visuals have all been fine. So the visual is when we get this wire back yeah. sample in here, but it's also when we take the plastic off the off the wire in the warehouse to make sure that the um, that the wire is, isn't rusty, hasn't got any score marks in it, hasn't got any scuffs in it, hasn't been knocked by the you know by yeah. another coil or yeah. or in transit at all. So. Okay. And that's, that's all fine. No, that's fine. So what I'll do <laughs> then is I will follow the audit trail through to the tensile tester mm -hmm. um, and verify the calibration of that. Okay. But no, your explanation was clear. Yeah. Thank you very much. No problem. In this video, the auditor is following an audit trail to verify the receiving inspection of the wire that is used in the rivet manufacture process. The checks are done in the internal laboratory. This gives the opportunity to verify the internal laboratory scope, the inspection and the test methods, and the competency of the laboratory personnel. The good thing is that the auditor asked the auditee to give an overview of the process at the beginning. The auditee explained that there are six samples that are verified, in this case matching the number of coils within the batch. The auditor also made good use of the control plan during this part of the audit. The auditor explained that for the tensile test, the number of coils checked depends on how many coils in the batch. He explained that if there are less than 10 coils, only one coil is checked. But if there are more than 10, for example, between 10 and 20, two samples are taken. The auditor asks what happens if a coil fails the tensile test. Although the auditee answered this verbally, there is also the opportunity to verify the reaction plan that should be defined within the control plan. The auditor established that the tensile test is done in another area within the organisation and he stated that he would follow the audit trail to this later in the audit to verify the calibration status of the equipment. The audit then moved on to the decarburisation test, which the auditee explained verbally. Here there would have been the opportunity to look at the inspection and test work instruction. Also, it was not clear whether the test was an attribute test or a variable test that was undertaken using the microscope. In either case, the auditor should verify the acceptance criteria, the calibration of the microscope, and the measurement system analysis for this type of equipment. It was also evidence from the audit that the organisation relies on the supplier certificate of the analysis of many of the material properties. In this case, this would relate to IETF requirement 8.4.2.1 type and extent of control and this requirement has been supplemented by sanctioned interpretation 7 which added the requirement where characteristics or components 
pass through the organization's quality management system without validation and control, the organization shall ensure that the appropriate controls are in place at the point of manufacture. This gives the opportunity for the auditor to follow the audit trail to the supplier selection, any supplier monitoring that is done and any supplier audits that have been undertaken to verify the controls related to the pass-through characteristics are being managed effectively.